I can video too while I'm doing this. I'm playing a few songs and I have a, a discourse on certain philosophical questions that have come up in the last couple of weeks. Hellhole, the prettiest girl in town, hellhole, the prettiest girl in town, hellhole, the prettiest girl, so how'd she wind up in a... She was a woman who had always been accustomed to such fine things, you'd be stunned. From her upbringing, you would think her pals were thinking they would always be a fund, but they were wrong. Her friends had bigger states to live on, and when she looked and saw them on the villas with their parents while their maids were doing cleanup, they were always up to something. They never had to come back to a hellhole. The prettiest girl in town, hellhole. The prettiest girl in town. A carriage that would take her to the beaches in the California sun. She flew to visit other boys who sent her tickets for some weekends filled with fun. But she said no when they would ask her would she marry. She had a plan. She'd be an artist in the city where the streets are paid with money. The only disadvantage is the people ride the subway in a hellhole. are its senses. I can confidently identify five of them thanks to the memory of my mind. Sight, sound, touch, taste, smell, touch, taste, sound, sight, smell, touch, taste, sound. I'm going to do a, um, an essay. It's called the self-stultification essay. Oh, but first I want to introduce him with a song. You know, many things I know, my queen, but how to win what I have seen. A rogue I've been, still I would flaunt my past, but that it wants to haunt me. Now I go to catch a star, a spring I leap, but miss it far. This star has kept her strength and speed, while I spent my sacred seed I find now I have little left desire much but deep bereft you have much to learn young pup life is air an empty cup which fills to drain then fills again rejuvenating what has been your youth is still upon 
your brow And since you call me queen I vow to do my best to aid your cause This bloody tyrant soon should pause But I am too unworthy of her Honey, don't make her done poorer than she is The little well take away with us. Like Sting and other practitioners of tantric yoga, we can learn to channel our energy. As them keener boys they play here sometimes, they say, demand good love hold in your chi. But even now I destroy the generative impulse by freeing it onto your creaseless brow. I stultify myself while you crinkle your forehead. The fire is out, the soul has left the body, the spirit is gone. A zombie remains. In exploring man's relation to fire, Freud identified a temptation to extinguish the flame with a stream of urine. We must resist that temptation and parcel fire's energy by parceling out orgasms to create possibilities. We own fire's power when we harness and bridle its brain from flames, yet we use the fire extinguisher within us to cool the sheets and calm the body. Do we want firepower, or do we want what the fire gets us? I want to have my cake and eat it too. I want truth, and all I create and achieve through the mind is art. I opiate myself with my assets, well hidden and vandal proof until I need them, and thus, thus do I waste my life. Smoking the opium den 
things I've got. I thank God daily for the things I'm not. Moldy Peaches 2000. Uh, that's a very interesting band. It's like the new Velvet Underground over here. Okay, uh, we're, we're talking about the period, uh, a conversation I had with the conductor, and uh, what we discussed was this idea of translucence versus uh, opaqueness. Yeah. Uh, the next, okay. Uh, Two packs. Art liberates or ensnares. Art that liberates is a philosopher's stone, a specula, a sapphire, a lens purified for translucence through which light passes. We arrive at truth through art, not by becoming art, but by using it. Art is either opaque or translucent. By the end of the movie of Crimes and Misdemeanors, a doctor uses medicinal art to murder his wife, while his rabbi, who calls God to the universe, loses his eyesight. We lose our eyesight by looking directly at an eclipse. There is no conflict within the doctor's destructive mind. Although it can be intelligent and charming like the mind of Hannibal Lecter, it is opaque. When art eclipses reality, it is opiating, therefore opaque. Be careful not to draw opaqueness from dead letters, but you worship the words that they become. Amen! The word is a veil upon the truth. How do we get to truth? Through words, not by becoming the words. An eclipse of reason activates the destruction motif of the Frankenstein story. In the Karloff film, the moment of eclipse resembles an epileptic fit. As his colleagues restrain and subdue him, Dr. Frankenstein yells, It's alive! The golden calf and the golem are other examples of the creative act made concrete yet opaque. How appropriate that the calf is made of gold. For the escaping Israelites, it could have been a device of transport or a tool. Instead, it becomes an icon. Worshipping it, a fetishism, destroys its function. What is the function of any creative act, if not as an end to itself? Art serves as a device of transport. We arrive at the truth through art. Truth appears like an illumination. An opaque surface blocks the illumination, and when an opaque surface is reflective like the golden calf, it can return the illumination shined upon it. Thus, someone like Peter de Souza over there, he's able to say that bright people appreciate his work, while dimwits do not. His work is opaque, not clear and translucent, and therefore, it reflects its audience, whether they are bright or dim. I like a bright audience. Do we clarify or befuddle? Art, at its worst, eclipses the illumination behind it. Pornography, then, is opaque art. The Bible is translucent art. The tree of knowledge exists for us not to partake of it. Like the bomb, so beautiful in destruction, we cannot use it. The devouring element of our id accelerates our demise. Those who carefully tend the garden of divinity thrive. Beware when letters come to life. Like when we put the magic letters into the figures made of clay. An apocalypse occurs when the maskers take off their mask. They go away from the mask. The apocalypse of the anti-folk movement removes the masks of bureaucratic kingdoms and returns us to the foundations upon which they were built. In the image of the creative spirit, Faust believed his acts were above accountability. Through his involvement with Beatrice and Helen, he learned that he was also the cause. He is the cause we all are. We must never cease to call God into the universe. Put the Creator, that's what they must in place, let fancy and delight run away with us. That concludes the
my eyes It's too familiar to recognize I'm tired of keeping my love Those that want some people to make more songs for us. And I will pass tip jar. Thank you. Thank you. Well, standing before the fire, Roger succumbed to Frank's temptation, emitting a self-enchanting laugh he gave into release, destroying his generative impulse by freeing it onto her creaseless brow. Fran's drenched forehead crinkled with the droplets from Roger's stultified enthusiasm. It was then that Roger's soul left him. Its departure from his body extinguished a flame in front of them leaving a cold darkness and a zombie in a human shell. What became of Roger's soul? It infiltrated a restricted area where it alerted the attention of the soul police. Without his soul, nothing could stir movement in Roger and smooth the creases that dented his brow, except for the sharp and hollow pounding of the dumbbell. A fissure extended through the depths of his brain, and to the casual observer, he looked concerned. I drove cross country with a zombie. He was my childhood friend, Roger the Burnout. Formerly, a man who excelled at precision race car driving, now he could barely steer himself into a bathroom. I brought him to a medium, and he said he lost his soul. I, she, just, she said that he lost his soul and suggested that I take him on a road trip, paying close attention for clues as to his whereabouts. set aside 30 vacation days, loaded up the family vehicle, and away we went, getting through life, even when the point for getting through life was gone. Roger awakened gradually. As we rode, he seemed drawn to the prisons, Danbury, Folsom, ultimately to Alcatraz. One night, while gambling in Reno, he had an out-of-body experience, and he blurted out, Free me! Where are you? Where's your soul? I asked. I'm in prison. My zombie shell is here, but my soul is in Alcatraz. The date was July 14th, Bastille Day. The revolution came at last, and after the peasants stormed the prison, the punished souls within escaped. My friend's soul, having been safely locked away within the Pandora's box of Alcatraz, on this day returned to his body. It was the specially spirited soul. Reunited with it, Roger became both intentional and agreeable to the seductions of Frank, a knowing, attentive hustler. Later that night, in the motel room, Roger said, That felt good. Did it feel good to you? After a moment's silence, I answered, The boy left an hour ago, but I loved him. Who are you? he asked. I'm Gustav, your old friend. Don't you know me? He started raging. Imprison my soul in the zombie holocaust. I will kill them all. I called for the police immediately. Deactivate this man. The arriving officers agreed that he was too spirited, like a spirit possessed. I visited the prison in which the law enforcement agents incarcerated my friend. There, he tortured zombies until such time as another sentence arose from the group, at which time Roger returned to his zombie state. There's nothing for you to do about it, sir, said the warden. The environment is climatically controlled for these rascals. Can't have you running loose in a theme park, not where the theme is renegade souls. Let them knock themselves out as the spirit stirs them. Roger 
Roger slept through it. I left him in Alcatraz and headed east. Theater is Ozark. 